Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now that we have derived the equations for <coughs> Kalman filter namely the forecast equation, the forecast mean, the forecast covariance, observation, the analysis step, the analysis mean and the analysis covariance. In this case the system is linear, the uh, noise is Gaussian therefore the forecast is a Gaussian random variable, the observations have Gaussian distribution, analysis have a Gaussian distribution as we had observed uh, several times in the previous lectures that Gaussian distribution is the only one that is decided uniquely by the mean and the covariance. So, if I compute the analysis covariance and the analysis mean I essentially characterize the entire probability distribution. Against this now I am going to <coughs> describe couple of uh, simple example to illustrate the dynamics. <coughs> First I am going to talk about scalar dynamics with no observation that means this is called stochastic dynamics. So, let A be a scalar positive W k be a scalar Gaussian random variable with mean 0 and variance q, q is the variance and x naught is m naught p naught. So, p naught in this case is a scalar, p naught is a scalar. The dynamics is given by a simple scalar linear dynamics x k is equal to a times x k minus 1 plus w k. <coughs> So, we have talked about the value of A, W k, x naught. The solution for this linear recurrence can be given by this. I would like you to verify the correctness of this equation by substituting back into the uh, uh, by, by using the method of substitution uh, that is the best way to describe it. So, from here we get this solution. Now, I can take the mean of both sides please remember the mean of w j is 0 and w j is are temporally uncorrelated. Therefore, if I took the mean the second term does not contribute anything the mean of the state at time k is a to the power of k m naught. The variance of the state x k at time k is p k that is equal to variance of x uh, a times x k minus 1 plus w k if you multiply a random variable by a constant you multiply the covariance by the square of the constant variance of the sum is the sum of the variances since the two quantities are not uh, correlated. Therefore, the variance of the state at time k is given by this and this x k is essentially the forecast because I am simply using the model. So, it a to the power of k m k is the mean of the model forecast the a square p k minus 1 plus q is the variance associated with the model forecast. Please understand this variance has two components one coming from the initial covariance the distribution of the initial condition second coming from the model noise. <coughs> this is the scalar analog of the vector uh, forecast covariance we have already derived within the Kalman within the Kalman framework. And uh, if you now substitute uh, p k minus 1 in terms of p k minus 2, p k minus 2 in terms of p k minus 3 and so on and open it up and, and simplify p k depends on p naught a to the power of 2 k p naught plus q times a to the power 2 a to the power 2 k minus 1 divided by a square minus 1. Again, I would like you to verify by solving this simple linear recurrence relation. So, for a given m naught, p naught, and q, what is m naught? The mean of the initial condition, p naught is the 
covariance of the initial condition q is the variance of the observation uh, I am sorry is the variance of the model noise. I would like to be able to now analyze the behavior of all the moments uh, what are the moments the first moment and the second moment of the forecast that simply depends on a now that simply depends on a because all the other factors are, are fixed for a given m naught p naught and q the behavior of the forecast moments the first moment and second moment depend only on a when a is less than or equal in the region a greater than 0 less than or equal to 1 the model is stable what do you, what do you mean by the model is stable the model solution um, uh, uh, without the, <coughs> the, the, the the model solution um, uh, does not explode to, to infinity. In fact, it can be shown from the uh, uh, solution of the model equation in the previous step x k is equal to a to the power of x naught plus that we can readily verify that limit x k as k equals to is, 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 is 0 then p k <coughs> when the limit of p k is also given by that. So, the, the limit of x k is given by this the limit of p k is given by this and I would like to be able to tell you th that this essentially comes from the first equation I which I would like to call it star which I would like to call it star. So, if this is star if this is double star in the next equation both of this comes from star and double star. Now, if a is less than uh, uh, if a is finite, but greater than 1 the model is unstable that is the complementary part the model is unstable the limit of x k goes to infinity the limit of p k also goes to infinity. When a is equal to 1 the model defines a random walk. So, in this case x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus w k plus 1. So, it executes a random walk on the real line in this case x k is equal to x naught plus w k w k is the sum of all the noise. So, e of x k is m naught p k the variance of x k p k is equal to p naught plus k q. Now, you can see even when a is equal to 1 while the mean remains the same its covariance increases linearly as p naught plus k times q. So, this is simply the analysis of the behavior of the solution of the stochastic linear dynamics given by x k plus 1 is equal to a times x k plus w k plus 1. Now, I would like to bring in the data into the picture and that brings I continue the same example I am now going to talk about Kalman filtering. So, without data I simply make predictions with model alone we talked about forecast mean forecast covariance we analyze how the forecast covariance varies for different regimes when a is less than less a is positive in between 0 and 1 when a is positive and greater than 1 when a is equal to 1. So, we divided the range of values of the parameters into 3 sub regions one stable another unstable another corresponds to the random walk. In 2 of the 3 cases when a greater than 1 or a is equal to 1 we see that the, 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 the variance go to infinity the random walk model is very interesting and we may have occasion to talk about it later. X k so now we let us continue x k plus 1 is equal to x w k plus 1 w k plus 1 is again the noise with 0 mean and variance q z k is equal to h times x k plus v k h is a scalar v k is a scalar v k is 0 mean uh, is a Gaussian random variable with a 0 mean and 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 variance little r. Now, I have to distinguish between forecast and the analysis therefore, forecast state is equal to a times the analysis at time k in other words I am going from time k to time k plus 1. This transition is what we are talking about earlier we talked about the transition from k minus 1 to k 
absolutely there is no difference except for the um, uh, values of the indices. <coughs> so, P k plus 1 f is the forecast covariance at time k plus 1 is equal to a square times the analysis covariance at time k plus q. The analysis itself is given by the forecast plus Goldman uh, uh, gain times z k minus h k f. The Kalman gain is given by this formula which is which can be simplified as which can be simplified as p k hat h r inverse. And then the analysis covariance is given by this expression p k f minus something I am trying to subtract a positive quantity uh, from p k f therefore, the analysis covariance becomes less. So, p k f r so analysis covariance is equal to forecast covariance times r divided by h square times p k f plus r inverse. So, this is the very simple expression for the analysis covariance as a function of k all these things all these things arise from the derivation of the Kalman filter except that we have substituted the corresponding formula. So, <coughs> now given I have the equations for the analysis analysis covariance forecast forecast covariance I can now talk about the stability of the analysis part in order to understand the stability of the analysis part in other words what do I want to find does the analysis go to infinity as time goes to infinity does the analysis comes down to 0 uh, what happens to the analysis error what happens to the forecast error as a function of the model parameter these are some of the things that we would like to be able to understand to analyze the stability of the filter. So, in this case forecast is given by uh, the forecast at time k plus 1 is equal to a times 1 minus k h h uh, k k h x k f plus a times k k z f z k. The analysis at time k is given by this I would like you to go back to what we have what, what we are doing. Look at this now I can substitute the in this equation how do I get this I can substitute the analysis expression into the forecast expression that is exact I, I can also substitute the forecast expression into the analysis expression. So, that analysis at time k plus 1 can be expressed in terms of uh, uh, forecast at time k uh, I am sorry analysis at time k that means I can get a recurrence in the analysis analysis value at time k and k plus 1 I, al I can also get the forecast expressions connecting the forecast at time k plus 1 to forecast at time k that is the important part of the recurrence in here analysis depends on forecast forecast depends on analysis by mutually substituting each other I can express forecast depend on forecast analysis depend on analysis at time k plus 1 to time k that is the recurrence we are talking about. So, by substituting this I get one recurrence for the forecast the one recurrence for the analysis. So, if I have a forecast I can compute the forecast error if I have analysis I can compute the analysis error we have already seen the forecast is equal to forecast minus the state given by the model analysis again uh, 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 analysis error can again be computed as we have already seen how to handle the analysis error forecast errors. I also have the expression for the forecast covariance in terms of analysis covariance and in this case covariance is essentially the variance the forecast variance is a square times the analysis variance plus q here again the analysis variance depends on the forecast variance again I can substitute each other I can substitute this in here I can substitute this in here I can then relate forecast at time k plus 1 to forecast at time k analysis time k plus 1 to analysis at time k. If you do that the example continues now after that substitution I, I get 
of this equation yes you can see this is heavily uh, uh, there is a lot of heavy algebra. Now, divide both sides by r if I divide both sides by r I get this relation. So, what does it tell you this tells you the forecast covariance at time k plus 1 is related to the forecast covariance at time k. Now, look at the expression on the right hand side the forecast covariance occurs both in the numerator and the denominator. So, this is the nonlinear recurrence relation <laughs> this is a nonlinear recurrence relation. Therefore, I am now going to uh, change the notation I am going to define p k is equal to p k f by r if I did this this one in view of this one you get this relation where alpha is the ratio of q over r this is an interesting ratio what is q q is the variance of the model noise r is the uh, 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 variance of the observation noise. So, the ratio of the two noises is alpha. So, if you look at this normalized forecast covariance see that is what I, I, I want to emphasize in this is the dynamics of evolution of the normalized forecast variance. What is the normalization? I have normalized this with respect to the variance of the observation. I, I have normalized this with the variance of the observation. So, if you look at this relation you can see a is a constant p k p k plus 1 depends on p k h is a, again a constant alpha is the ratio. So, you dip, this expression on the right hand side depends only on um, on on a h and alpha. This type of recurrence relation in mathematics in the theory of difference equations has come to be called Riccati equation. It is a first order equation why this is the first order equation k plus 1 depends on k. It is scalar because we are concerned with only with the radian uh, variances is nonlinear obviously because the right hand side depends on p k in the both the numerator as well as the denominator. Therefore, it is a first order nonlinear scalar recurrence the particular structure has been around for a long time it is due to Riccati um, an Italian mathematician there is a Riccati equation both in ordinary differential equation as well as in difference equation here we are concerned with the difference equation analog of the Riccati equation. This equation is not easy to solve because it is nonlinear. So, now I am going to talk about the asymptotic properties of the forecast covariance. So, let us see how we got here once more I substituted the um, the quantities because forecast depends on analysis analysis depends on forecast I mutually substituted them and made forecast dependent on forecast analysis depend on analysis. Likewise we did for the covariances as well once we did the covariances I am now trying to single out the forecast covariance I normalize the forecast covariance by the observational covariance r and rewrote the equation that resulted in an in, 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 in a normalized forecast covariance dynamics which is yeah, yeah, difference equation it is a first order scalar nonlinear difference equation. Now, I am going to look at the asymptotic properties of this um, uh, uh, first order nonlinear scalar equation why what is the aim the aim is the following. I would like to be able to understand the regimes <coughs> excuse me namely uh, does the under what condition does the covariance grow under what condition the covariance the forecast covariance died out that relates to analysis of stability of the forecast covariance. Now, once I analyze the stability of the forecast covariance the corresponding properties of the analysis covariance follow immediately because forecast covariance depends on analysis covariance analysis covariance depends on forecast covariance. So, behavior of one asymptotic behavior of one will imply the asymptotic behavior of the other. So, th to that end I am now going to assume h is 1 without loss of generality what is h h is just a parameter that leads to converting the state into the observation. So, please rec remember z k is equal to h of x k plus v k in this case I am assuming h is equal to 1 I am assuming h is equal to 1. So, in that case my equation now becomes simpler like this a square p k divided by p k plus 1 plus alpha. I would like to be able to understand the behavior the long term behavior of this equation this important equation star here. 
in order to understand the long term behavior of this what do I do I am trying to look at the uh, increment p k plus 1 minus p k that means how much p k plus 1 differs from p k at the kth step if I substituted p k plus 1 in terms of p k and do, did the algebra I get this relation I get this relation which can be now written as a ratio of a polynomial divided by p k plus 1 the, the, the polynomial p in p k is given by the expression on the numerator which we can readily identify. Yes if you are trying to read through there is ton of algebra and, and I, I think the only way to be able to do it is to be able to hit all the major developments and that is what I am trying to do leaving behind the details of the derivation of the algebra to the reader. <coughs> So, when, when does this recurrence relation on p k um, uh, converges that means p k plus 1 is equal to p k is the condition for convergence p k plus 1 is equal to p k is the condition for convergence at which time lambda uh, delta k is 0 at which time delta k is 0 delta k is the equilibrium if delta k is 0 then g of p k must be 0. So, now you can see how we have uh, uh, changed the variable from p k to delta k express delta k as a ratio of 2 um, uh, 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 polynomials in, in, in the normalized uh, 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 forecast covariance p k. Uh, we have already now identified delta k being 0 is an equilibrium point at which case p k plus 1 is equal to p k that means p k does not change it has come to a stable value because delta k is the ratio of 2 polynomials in p k the numerator polynomial must be 0 for delta k to 0 and that is where we are. So, this calls for analyzing the behavior of the solution of the numerator polynomial the numerator polynomial is equated to 0 it is rewritten it can be rewritten by changing the variables. So, I am going to concoct a new variable beta beta is equal to a square plus alpha minus 1 please understand a is the model parameter alpha is the ratio of the two variances model noise to observation noise. So, I can concoct a new symbol beta to this term. So, if I did that my polynomial becomes this this is the second order polynomial in, in p k I can now up uh, apply the standard rule for finding the roots of the second order polynomial there are two roots p super star and p sub star these expressions are now dependent on only beta and alpha please recall beta depends on a and alpha. So, I have I have a I have a numerator polynomial g of alpha which is a quadratic I have solved it. So, I now know the value of the equilibrium at which point the the forecast covariance will settle down. There are two equilibria p super star and p sub star. Now, we would like to be able to understand the behavior of the solution around these two uh, uh, equilibria to see whether uh, the slope of it is increasing or decreasing such as it is like this or it is like this. This corresponds to this corresponds to unstable this corresponds to stable why this corresponds to stable if I am here this is if this is p k p k plus 1 is smaller if I am here this is p k. So, from here it pushes here from here it pushes here however if I am here the in this case if I am here it grows bigger if I am here it grows bigger. So, it goes away and it goes away therefore, this is unstable that is stable. Stable means if I am to the left of it it pushes to the right if I am to the right of it it pushes to the left that means the stable equilibrium is an attractor in the neighborhood. An unstable equilibrium is a repeller if I am to the right I move to the right if I am to the left I move to the left. So, this is the repel here attract attractor 
So, to be able to see something is a repeller on a tractor, we have to get the slope of G f alpha, um, I am sorry, uh, 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 G f p k in the, in the, at, at, at the point where the equilibrium occurs, where the equilibrium occurs. Therefore, the general expression for the gradient of G, G prime of p k is minus 2 k minus 2 p k plus beta. Now, we are going to evaluate by setting p k is equal to p super star, super star is uh, the star is a super, superscript. In this case, the, 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 the derivative is negative. So, please understand here the derivative is negative, here the derivative is positive. So, the de derivative negative corresponds to an attractor, the derivative positive corresponds to yeah, 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 repeller. So, you can readily identify this is p star, this is p sub star. So, p sub star is unstable, p star is stable. So, we need to consider only again I want to uh, re emphasize one is an attract, one is a attractor, another is a repeller, stable and stable. Therefore, in the limit p k will go into the attractor. When p k goes into the attractor, at the attractor p star is equal to a star uh, a square p star divided by 1 plus p star plus alpha. So, you can readily see this must be the expression for the forecast covariance normalized forecast covariance at the point at the equilibrium at the equilibrium you can you can solve this equation for p star and you can get the exact value. I would like to now give I um, uh, uh, strongly recommend that you plot g of p k versus p k you know g of p k is a very simple expression and I also would like you to plot delta k versus p k and verify all the claims that we have talked thus far. I think these are very important exercises to understand thoroughly the long term behavior of the forecast covariance when the model is scalar, when the model is scalar. Now, you can see uh, the, the, the p star and, and, and p super star and p sub star depend on, depend on beta, beta and alpha, beta depends on A. So, you can find the regions in the parameter space that gives rise to stable behavior that gives rise to unstable behavior. I hope I hope uh, 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 that is very clear. So, so what does this tell you again I want to re-emphasize this. This too essentially tells you that no matter where you start p k plus 1 will come and settle at this point depending on the values depending on the values of, of, of a alpha and so on. So, using MATLAB I would like you to be able to verify all these conclusions and that is an important part that is an important part of the of the analysis that is an important part of the uh, uh, understanding of the of the Kalman filter dynamics. Once I know it converges I think it makes sense to ask ourselves the question how fast does it converge that relates to rate of convergence. This is not the first time we are talking about rate of convergence. We have talked about rate of convergence when we talked about gradient methods and, and especially when iterative methods like gradient method. So, in any iterative algorithm there are two questions one should ask does it converge if it does at what rate. So, we are going to quickly indulge in the, in the calculation for the rate of convergence. Let y k be equal to p k minus p star. So, what is p k minus p star? p k is the current value of the normalized forecast covariance. p star is the asymptotic value at the stable uh, equilibrium. So, I would like to be able to measure the difference between where I am and where, where, where I will hit sooner or later. So, I also know the equation for, for, for p k plus 1. So, we would like to be able to compute the rate at which we would like to be able to compute the rate at which we, we, we converge. 
So, y k plus 1 is equal to p k plus 1 minus p star. So, I am going to substitute p k plus 1 p star simplify use the relation y k this is this must be p k sorry p sub k p k minus p star is y k this is also p k sorry this is also p k p sub k p sub k. So, if you this is also p sub k. So, if you can now see we have already uh, uh, gotten an expression for y k plus 1 relating to y k and what is y k? y k is essentially the difference between p k and p star. So, if I consider 1 over y k plus 1 that is given by this expression. So, this expression is essentially coming from here which I can rewrite like this again this is y k sorry y sub k. Now, I can I can I can rewrite this expression as a sum of these two terms again a little algebra will give you. So, 1 over y k plus 1 is equal to 1 over y k times a constant plus another constant. So, I am getting a recurrence for 1 over y k plus 1. So, please go through the algebra now y k is the distance between p k and p star I am trying to express y k plus 1 which is the distance between p k plus 1 and p star in terms of uh, y, y k. So, I am going trying to get a recurrence in y k instead of trying to get a recurrence in y k I can equivalently get a recurrence in 1 over u, uh, y k why we would like to be able to consider a quantity which is easy to analyze that is all what the matter here is. Now, I am going to change the variable once more you can see how many uh, different ways in which we can look at it. So, 1 over y k is z k that essentially tells you the previous equation at the bottom of slide 30 now becomes a linear equation. The linear equation is given by z k plus 1 is equal to c times z k plus b where c is a constant and b is a constant a that is the key. So, let us go over this uh, quickly once more. I have a Riccati equation I am going to change the variable for the Riccati equation I have a Riccati equation for p k now I have a Riccati equation um, 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 I, I have a corresponding nonlinear equation for y k plus 1 while I have defined y k I am trying to uh, rewrite it as a recurrence in 1 over y k it turns out the Riccati equation after making these transformation these two transformation namely y k is equal to p k plus 1 minus p star. 1 over y k is equal to z k the Riccati equation becomes linear. Linear equation can be very easily solved I can I can iterate the linear equation. So, this is the solution for the linear equation which can be written like this. So, z k is, is given by this expression that is an important expression. So, 1 over z k is y k y k is equal to 1 over z k def, uh, defined by this. So, let us not worry about this part. In this equation b divided by c minus 1 is a constant even so when c is greater than 0 and c is I am sorry when c is greater than 1 I am sorry when c is greater than 1 c k to the power uh, c to the power k goes to infinity therefore y k will tend to 0 y k tend to 0. So, you can you can readily see that this expression is equal to is equal to c to the power minus k times a constant. Therefore, when c is greater than 1 this y k tends to 0 at the exponential rate I think that is the importance of this. So, c is equal to 1 plus p star by a whole square and that must be greater than 1. So, under 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 the condition that c is greater than 1 which in turn relates to 1 plus p star divided by 2 square is greater than 1 we can really see y k converges at an exponential rate. So, this is an exponential convergence that is an important that is an important conclusion. So, what what is that we have accomplished we have accomplished the following 
by converting a sequence uh, by con uh, by converting the Riccati equation to a sequence through a sequence of um, a transformation we converted it uh, a nonlinear equation to a linear equation which we then solved and found conditions under which this <coughs> linear equation solution to which go to go to infinity which in turn means z k goes to infinity z k goes to infinity when c is greater than 1 when z k goes to infinity when c greater than 1 y k tends to 0. Now, please realize <coughs> y, the definition of y k the definition of y k is p k minus p star y k refers to the distance between the current value of the forecast covariance with the asymptotic value. So, that distance goes to 0 at an exponential rate and this gives you values of the parameters under which the Calvin filter forecast covariance not only converges, but also converge at a exp exponential rate. <coughs> Excuse me. The rate of convergence continues once we have again we have assumed h is equal to 1. Once we have the convergence of of of, of p k we can now con conclude the convergence of p k hat which is the analysis covariance. The expression for p k hat divided by r is given by this equation. If I took the limit of this p k hat tends to a particular limit because p k f tends to a particular limit and this is the limit of the analysis covariance. So, analysis covariance converges with forecast covariance they work in locked step. Now, I am going to go back to the analysis of what is called stability of the filter, uh, stability of the filter. H is 1, this is the forecast covariance, sorry, this is the forecast covariance, I am sorry, I sh did I say forecast covariance, that is wrong, this is the forecast error. The forecast error can be simplified to be this. The forecast error recurrence has two parts the homogeneous part and the forcing part. The homogeneous part is given at the following the forcing part consists of two error terms a k k k v k plus w k plus 1. So, this is the stochastic part this is the deterministic part the deterministic part is also the homogeneous part because this is the forcing. Please recall k k the uh, Kalman gain is given by this. So, from here I, I am going to get 1 minus k k as this. So, the Kalman gain k k is given by this formula which is p k divided by p k plus 1. From that you can readily infer 1 minus k k is equal to 1 over p k plus 1 substituting these and simplifying it can be verified that the e bar f of k plus 1 is given by this recurrence substituting the value of p star it can be verified that e bar f k plus 1 is equal to 1 over square root of c times e bar f k since c is greater than 1 1 over square root of c is 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 less than 1 that means, in going from time k to time k plus 1 the error reduces. Therefore, if you compute the error e k bar f with respect to the state at time capital N e k bar f uh, uh, is given by 1 over square root of c to the power k minus n times e bar f by n. So, n is can be thought of as a starting time since 1 over square root of n uh, 1 over square root of c is less than 1 as k goes to infinity the term 1 over square root of c to the power k minus n tends to 0 therefore, the overall error goes to 0 this in turn means the filter is stable. So, we have analyzed all the properties um, of of the Kalman filter and have illustrated the 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 derivation as well as the nuances with respect to several properties of the Kalman filter equation using a simple static linear dynamics.
Thank you.